Hello Lego Masters in Training, it's Jessica from Lego Masters Season 1 and today we're going to go over tips if you're interested in applying for Season 2. Keep in mind that these tips are just my own personal opinion and feedback. They are not guidelines or rules or anything like that. It's just my own personal advice from me to you. So let's start with tip number one. In my own personal opinion, I feel like it's very important to have a very creative portfolio of Lego works. And when I say creative, I mean something very different and unique. I feel like I was a good candidate for Lego Masters because my artwork is very different and a lot of the builds that I did to apply for the show were very unique in style and had really creative concepts. So these concepts are things you don't see very common um, in the Lego world. Some things that I would consider to be common in the Lego world are buildings, airplanes, cars, things like that. Things that you've seen done over and over again with Lego. In my own personal opinion, I would suggest that if you're going to do those things, find a way to make them really stand out. Uh, I feel like I was picked because I had a very unique portfolio with very different things in them. So just keep that in mind. For example, if you're going to do a spaceship, don't just do a spaceship. Do like a flamingo spaceship, something like that, something that's unique and different. Now there's going to be a million flamingo spaceships flying around, so don't do that either. Do something different. As an artist, I like to do things that are different than what everybody else is doing. And you definitely saw that throughout the course of the season. So that was my own personal strategy uh, when doing the show and when applying. Tip number two, practice, practice, practice. Um, I use free brick a lot in my artwork and building. So I was not used to using instructions, which actually made me a great candidate for the show. But when I uh, found out that I might be a contender uh, for the final casting round, what I did was I spent money on sets uh, from the Lego store and started building sets, taking them apart, putting them together again and making different things out of them. So I personally feel that that really helped me prep for Lego Masters and learn a lot of new techniques. So on Lego Masters, there are no instructions. You cannot look things up on the internet. So you really have to uh, think outside the box and things are really left up to your imagination, which is also um, why personally I was a good candidate for the show because I don't use instructions and I'm able to take free brick and just create different things. But if you don't know how to do that, my suggestion would be to start with sets and learn some building techniques from there. Tip number three, I would apply with a partner. That way that gives you time to practice. You already know who your partner is. You can learn your strengths and weaknesses and how to communicate. So as everybody knows, I went on the show with someone I had never um, met before and did not know their building ability or their skill set or anything like that. So it was a lot harder for our team to compete, uh, which shows how talented our team was because we did make the finale. But that being said, I feel like if you do know your partner and you have the opportunity to practice together prior to the show, that's definitely an advantage. So I would highly recommend that. Tip number four, familiarize yourself with the motors or Lego boost or something like that. So as you notice from the show, motors are used very often and our team was at a huge disadvantage because we had never used them before in a Lego build. So I highly recommend you get some motors, test them out. They also have some color sensors that uh, Boone and Mark actually used in their final build with the paintbrush and some other mechanisms as well. So definitely get your hands on some of those and practice with them. Tip number five, get some Technic sets. If you haven't used them before, they are very advanced sets and they have so many different pieces in there and they can really help bring your builds to the next level. So I would definitely experiment with Technic if you haven't already. And you can mix and incorporate those pieces into the builds that you already have in some way. I do feel like they come in handy and really add a lot of structural integrity to your builds. 
Tip number six, try making something that you haven't made before out of Lego. So if you're a vehicle person, maybe you try making an animal or if you're a sculptor, maybe you um, and you do like sculptures of people and animals, maybe you try making a car. I feel like the more diverse things you know how to make out of Lego, the better. Um, and if you are really good at one thing, make sure you choose a partner who is good in different areas than you because then you will have a big advantage. Tip number seven, learn Lego math. So if you're not familiar um, with some of the Lego math, definitely look some of those up and learn it. So for example, uh, three plates equals one brick. Learning Lego math definitely comes in handy in a Lego competition. I feel like especially for the bridge challenge, that was extremely important, um, knowing the math and knowing uh, the difference between bricks and plates. So three plates equals one brick, but three plates is also heavier than one brick. So that's the strategy that Sam and I used for the derby challenge. Uh, we used more plates than bricks because we knew they would be heavier and weigh our car down more and that it would go faster and it worked uh so knowing different uh mathematical things about lego can definitely help you advance in the competition number eight maybe set some challenges up for yourself have very strict time limits and stick to them um, even if they're an hour long, maybe you give yourself an hour or two hour challenge, you know, to build a vehicle or something like that and really stick to it and try and get measurable results. Uh, the biggest challenge on Lego Masters is the time clock. There is limited time to build different things. So make sure that you practice at home if you can and definitely uh, pay attention to your pace. Measure how long it takes you to make one thing, to make a building, to make a character, and you can definitely use that to your advantage on the show. My next tip is to go outside your comfort zone. If you're used to making uh, the same kinds of things over and over, definitely push yourself before the competition. You know, um, go higher, go bigger. So a lot of the builders on the show were really great and technically advanced. However, a few teams really struggled with scale and making things a lot larger. That's really important to Lego Masters. So I feel like if you haven't done anything very large before that you should attempt it before the show, I feel like it would really, really help you out. And my 10th and final tip that you probably won't hear from anyone else but me, I would say to work out, uh, yeah, and stay in shape. You know, Lego Masters, some of those challenges are really long and a long day and can be exhausting. And I feel like the more you exercise, the more your body has stamina um, to stay awake and be energized. So I would highly recommend hitting the gym uh, before Lego Masters. And plus, that'll really help you running back and forth to the brick pit. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Please hit the link below. If you'd like to check out my hair bows or my artwork or anything like that, you can click the link below and visit my website, which is ragsyart.com. I hope these tips really helped you out. If there's a tip that you'd like to hear about that I didn't mention, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try and cover it in the next video. Bye everybody. Thank you so much.